Hello, I'm providing a solution to homework number seven, problem number one. You are asked to study dynamic behavior of a single link robot arm, which is driven by an armature controlled DC motor. Some parameters J, mass moment of inertia, M is for motor, L is for robot arm load, B, Torsional viscous damping coefficient, Tm, torque generated by motor, N, number of teeth of the gears, Ra, resistance, La, inductance of the circuit, Kt, torque constant, Kb, back EMF constant. The values of these parameters are given. Here, we ignore the armature inductance, LA. You were asked to find step A, derive the differential equation of motion governing the behavior of the circuit subsystem and rotational gear train mechanical subsystem. Then based on these equations, construct simulink block diagram to perform analysis and simulate the behavior of the output robot arm, angular velocity, and angular displacement. Then in step C, determine the transfer function from voltage input to angular displacement. And finally, find step response of the system and compare with the solution obtained from part B. We know this is a coupled electrical mechanical system. The electrical motor drives the smaller motor gear, which further drive the larger robot arm load gear. So here is a mechanical subsystem. which include the motor with a gear with gear T and M attached. Here is the robot arm rotational system. Let's first work on mechanical subsystem. So draw the free body diagram, a motor and a robot arm. This is the right view of the system. Let's show all the external forces acting on each of these two gears. So red color, we have moment torque Tm and frictional damping moment Bm times theta dot. Of course, there is the contact force from these two gears to each other, action and the reaction F, same magnitude, opposite direction. Then based on Newton's second law for rotational motion, we can list equation for the first gear. Similarly, assuming equation positive to be counterclockwise, we can list equation for the robot arm gear. From here, we can solve for the force F. Plug this F into equation number one. We have equation number four. Now let's have a quick review on gear kinematics. Two rotational subsystems are coupled with a pair of gears. To have perfect mesh for gears, we have these relationships. The number of T's is proportional to the radii of gears. And also, the linear velocity contact points are the same, so we have this relationship. 
Also, the power transmitted by the gear T times theta will be equal. And then the ratio of the angular displacement is the same as the ratio of angular velocity. So we can find the relationship between the angular displacement, angular velocity, and angular acceleration between the motor shaft and robot arm load shaft. Substitute these relationships to equation number four. We can have this combined mechanical system. We can see the contribution from robot arm load to moment of inertia and damping torque is reflected to motor shaft, which is proportional to square of gear ratio. Let's name this equivalent moment of inertia, equivalent damping coefficient. And here, torque moment can be obtained by the armature current times the torque constant Kt. Let's rewrite this in equation number six. Next, let's work on electrical service system. So based on Kirchhoff's voltage law, the voltage drop over this whole loop is zero. Here, LA is zero. So we can solve for the armature current, which is a function of VA and angular velocity of a motor shaft theta m dot. Based on these two equations, we can then construct simulink block diagram. Here, let me construct the electrical subsystem on the left side of the model and mechanical subsystem on the right hand side based on the equations. For electrical subsystem, we have division and addition operations. Let's go to math operation sublibrary, drag in, gain and addition blocks. Change the gain to 1 over Ra. For the mechanical subsystem, second order differential equations, we want to solve the simulate reorganize equation so that the highest order term will be the left side of the equation. It requires two integration blocks. Let's type in the input signal for the first integrator block, second order derivative of theta m. Here, d theta dt, change annotation to text format. Now let's come back to construct electrical subsystem. From the equation, we have VA minus back EM voltage. Drag in step function VA as a value. Change the sign to plus minus. Back EMF, we need a gain block. Right click. Flip, change the gain value to be kb back em constant times the angular velocity and feedback to the electro subsystem. So we have this coupled relationship based on this Faraday's law. Next, we construct the mechanical system right hand side of the equation. A gain block, kt, 
times armature current, you get the motor torque minus rotational damping times angular velocity, the damping torque. And then this is divided by JEQ. We have a tent left side of the equation, which is d theta m dt square. Next, we can add another gain block. Put in gear ratio. We can transform angular displacement of a motor shaft to the robot arm load shaft. Let's use a scope to monitor the angular displacement of these two shafts. One port for a theta L and the other port for theta M. Similarly, we can transform the angular displacement of the motor shaft to the angular velocity of the robot arm shaft by adding this gain block, which is the gear ratio, and monitor them by another scope. d theta l dt text format. Finally, you can reorganize all these lines to make them better looking. And assign the parameter values by double click here, run the simulation. We can see after some time, the angular velocity of the shaft reaches a steady state value. As for angular displacement, it will be increasing with time. Now let's move to step C, perform Laplace transform to find transfer function from voltage to theta. Assuming zero initial conditions, we can find equation number six and equation number eight in Laplace domain, name equation 9 and 10. Plug equation number 10 to equation number 9. We have this combined electrical mechanical system. So the transfer function from Va to theta m can be found. Since we know the transfer function from theta m to theta l is the gear ratio, so we can also find the transfer function from theta v a to theta l, which will be gear ratio times result from equation number 12. Finally, based on the transfer function, and step input in Laplace domain, we can use step function in MATLAB to find the dynamic history of angular displacement, compare with the results obtained from Simulink model. It is the same. Please let me know if you have any questions.